All right, so you're learning to code. You've just watched an eight hour course, perhaps one on the Small James channel. You get to the end of it, you might've spent a solid 40 hours progressing through it. You built something phenomenal. You're incredibly proud of it. You're at the pinnacle of your knowledge and coding prowess. And then you're like, well, I should use this knowledge and I should go build something. And then you're hit with this devastating wave of despair when you realize you have no idea how to do that. Then comes the self-hatred. You're like, oh my goodness, I'm terrible at coding. I wasn't cut out for this. Do I just have a small brain or did I, you know, knock my head too many times as a child? Do I have smooth, smooth brain, no folds, complete lack of brain cells? We've all been there. That experience in the coding world is known as tutorial hell, where you become so dependent on having a tutorial to hold your hand to allow you to build anything. The ability to independently apply your knowledge is just non-existent. I have been there. I taught myself how to code. Every day tutorial hell was a struggle for me until eventually I smacked my head against the wall for long enough and I found a solution. And so I'm going to share some insight with you in this video so that you may, by the end of today, escape from tutorial hell. And it will be a thing of the past and you can blossom into this beautiful programmer. Now, if we're going to understand the solution, first we need to have a comprehensive understanding of what tutorial hell actually is. And it comes down to two things. First is that people fail to understand what comprises learning. People think that, oh, I've watched the tutorial, I've learned. Close, but not quite. We'll talk about that in a second. And the second thing people fail to understand is that you know, when you are learning to code, you're learning a new technology, especially if you're doing that independently. As much as you're learning, you're also having to teach yourself. And people don't really consider this distinction, but it is a critical one because the ability to learn from a teacher versus teaching yourself is, you know, just a, a night and day difference. And it really comes into play when people encounter tutorial help. Now, if we take a second to think about my first point, you know, you watch this tutorial, you have consumed all this information. And if we look at the science of learning, that process is the encoding of the information into your brain. You watch this whole tutorial, even if you've just coded along with me, for example, for eight hours, and maybe that took you 40 hours and you've got this huge code base, this cool project, technically you're still just taking in this information and that's one it's only one of the two phases of truly understanding truly having learned something now the counterpart to the learning or the intaking of information phase is the application phase true knowledge and understanding is when you can take that information and apply it in a new context build something different in the case of programming and this is where people are really getting hung up with tutorial hell because they go to this application phase and they're like, well, I just can't do it. So I guess I'm inadequate. And that is very challenging. I totally empathize for you because it, you know, a lot of people suffer from tutorial hell. However, they won't for much longer. Now, so we've understood that there's actually two phases to learning and people are mucking up the application one. And there's actually a good reason for it. You know, if we think about our lives, most of us go to school. When it comes to a lesson, we get given the information, kind of like when I teach in a course. And if you think about a math class, the second part of the math class, the teacher will be like, okay, here's a worksheet. You can then apply your knowledge. You can figure out what it is that you still don't understand. And this part is the process that people are doing. They're essentially giving themselves tasks. They're saying, okay, my next task with this knowledge is to go build a new application. And they're coming up short, unable to do it, entering this pit of despair. Now, in teaching, when you want to become a good teacher, task design is critical. And there's something known as Vygotsky's zone of proximal development. And essentially how it works is that if we think of, you know, let's say you've watched a tutorial, your knowledge is currently here. Your understanding of a particular topic is here. And let's say this is pretty low to the ground. Now, 
essentially when I say, or when you tell yourself to go and build this application and you're failing to do so, it's because you're expecting this level of ability. And Vygotsky's zone of proximal development is basically saying, when it comes to the application of knowledge, task design, there is a Goldilocks zone, an absolute sweet spot that's like, okay, there needs to be a very gradual stepping stone between where we currently are and where we want to be. And if you create these stepping stones, then you get what's known as epistemic ascent. Your ability or understanding of that knowledge increases. However, if you have that stepping stone be too great, then you just are filled with feelings of inadequacy and failure. So what we need is to create tasks that allow us to apply this knowledge but are, you know, consistently within the zone of proximal development. And if we continue to do that, you can imagine how we would get, or we would exponentiate our knowledge until eventually we are at a point that we can build out entire applications without looking at any single code base or reference for knowledge. Now, you can imagine that this is a very continual process. It's not a discrete jump. You can't go from here to here, and that's what people in tutorial hell are fundamentally trying to do. When they're learning something in the application of their knowledge, they're just cooking the task design. And so if we think about practically what we need to do when we're learning to code, let's say we've just watched a tutorial, that means that we never have to deal with tutorial hell again. It's create these stepping stones. Now, what this intermediary step looks like in programming is you've just built out a code base. Let's say you follow one of my tutorials, you've just built out a code base. You've got a cool project and you want to go build your own one. Well, before you go build your own one, the keyword you're looking for to create these intermediary steps, to create these tasks in that zone of proximal development is adaptation. You need to take that original code base and modify it using skills, very small, little, gentle, delicate skills that you have learned in that tutorial and build upon them. Don't start something from scratch, build upon what you've already done. And that could look like anything. Let's say, for example, you build a to-do app and you want to make a note-taking app. At their very core, they have very similar applications. They both are built upon the CRUD, create, read, update, and delete uh, functionalities. So you can take a to-do app and very quickly turn it into a note-taking app. However, you might find that level of adaptation, even though you're not starting from scratch, is still too much. It's outside of the zone of proximal development. And so you just, once again, nothing wrong with that. You just need to rein in your expectations. And you could potentially rein them all the way into just changing the text, changing the font size, changing the color, adding code comments to a code base to explain in your own language what stuff does and then once you've done that maybe then you want to create a new feature or functionality to build upon what you've already done but also just create ever so slightly a new context to apply that knowledge and understanding and in doing so you may have to reference your original code base and you will find that almost any feature or new adaptation you want to add to an existing project you'll have an example of how that code or how that feature should work in the existing code base. And then you can just make gentle, gradual modifications to it until you have independently built this new feature using your reference knowledge. And this is, this is creating recall, but it's also extending that existing knowledge. And it's, you know, essentially full circle on learning. You've learned, you've applied in a new context, you'll find things you don't understand, you'll refer back. And then you'll go back to them and you will overcome that challenge. And if you can create those stepping stones, you know, once again, starts off changing the color of the text. Maybe the next one is code commenting. Maybe the next one is adding a new feature. Do that a bunch of times until you have, you know, an application that is totally irrecognizable from the first one, completely distinct for all intents and purposes. And then you'll find your knowledge is here and you can build your own application. If I think back to my own learn to code journey, what it looked like, what helped me overcome tutorial hell today so I didn't have to worry about it tomorrow, was taking a code base and adapting it until it was essentially my own project. You couldn't see the original app, even though it was built on the same skeleton. 
And creating these adaptations starts off small and it just, once again, grows, it snowballs out of control until you have the confidence and knowledge and ability to apply that knowledge in new contexts that you need to tackle a task like creating your own code base. So next time you get stuck in tutorial hell, just remember it's actually a natural part of learning. It's part of the application process when you intake information, you encode information, then you need to recall it and you need to apply that knowledge. That's a critical part of learning. However, the application is needs to be cleverly thought out. You need to be applying that knowledge within the zone of proximal development, which is essentially creating tasks or applications, opportunities for application that are achievable, attainable, smart. Congratulations, you now have all the knowledge you need to go out and beat tutorial hell. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe buttons. Let me know if you've got any anecdotal experience or if you think this is interesting. Love to hear it. Catch you guys later. Peace. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the learn to code roadmap or dive straight in with these videos. That's a good one.